so hello everyone i will be discussing today um module 3.2 which is a uh, thermal processing of food part 2 so this is for the subject fst 222 uh, food processing one so basically these are our general objectives is of course First, to explain the use of high temperatures to preserve and ensure the safety of food. Second is to understand the importance of thermal processing as one of the most uh, widely used unit operations employed in the food industry and its significance as a critical control point. So let's start first with a uh, sterilization process and equipment. Uh, since um, last time, our first module, which is the uh, part one, we talked about um, blanching, uh, pasteurization, and um, other thermal processes, which are still part of this. So this is just a continuation. Okay, so sterilization, of course, um, its uh, aim is to the the destruction, no, of all bacteria, including their uh, spores. And the uh, temperature required here is uh, definitely uh, 110 to 121 degrees uh, Celsius. So it was already established in your reading kung bakit yan yung temperatures na um, pinagbasihan for sterilization. Uh, of course, it's to inactivate the spores of um, Bacillus and Clostridium, no? which are um, one of the um, reasons kung bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng food poisoning. No? And in sterilization process, there are uh, actually two, no? or minsan there's a combination of the two, and we use the water or steam as the source of heat. And there are three phases in uh, the sterilization process. So let me enumerate that. And let's move the camera here. Okay, so uh, phase one is the heating phase. So dito there's an increase in temperature to the required sterilization uh, temp. No? So, minsan meron ding uh, preheating phase, no? which is just um, um, tinataas lang nila yung temp before it reaches to the uh, required temperature. So, in phase 1, this is the heating phase. So, i-increase nila yung temp. So, maybe it's 110, 121 or even higher depende sa food item the food product itself de depende rin kung uh, ganong kadami yung volume na ating i-sterilize no? and of course the phase 2 uh, second phase is the holding phase so this is uh, the temperature will be maintained for a defined time so, maybe 1 minute, 2 minutes, 5 minutes. De again, depending nga po sa volume ng ating i-sterilize. And then, the phase 3, third phase is the cooling phase. So, the temperature here will be decreased by introduction of cold water to the autoclave. So, itong autoclave natin, it's the equipment that is um, very much used for sterilization process. And I will introduce them to you. So, this is um, an example of a very simple autoclave, no? So, as you can see, so, mukha siyang pressure cooker. And actually, um, ganyan talaga ang itsura talaga ng um, autoclave, the simple one, no? So, autoclave is a sealed device. Kung makikita nyo naman, there's um, a lid, no? And uh, screws, it's a seal device similar to a uh, sorry similar to a pressure cooker and it kills microorganism using steam saturated steam or water under pressure so the use of moist heat facilitates the killing of all microorganisms including 
um, heat resistant endospores such as Bacillus and uh, Clostridium. So this is um, of the process, no? Uh -huh. Okay, so these are the process of the autoclave and also components. So isa isa natin siya. We have a thermometer. We also have the pressure gauge. We have the pressure release valve and the lid. So kung dito po ang thermometer is usually um halos kalapit siya ng um pressure gauge but this one we have here is the pressure gauge itself makikita dyan uh, pag tumaas so mataas yung pressure we also have the pressure release valve um, that is here no? so may kinakabit po dyan in order uh, yung heat no? yung kung saan mang magagalik yung um, source ng heat and we also have the lid so here um, on the picture on your right is actually um, a horizontal type ng uh, autoclave kasi meron tayong iba-iba we have vertical which is ito katulad niyan which is very simple and we have the um, horizontal which is um, in large volume yung kaya niyang gawin so um, uh, if you have extra time uh, you can check this PowerPoint through your Google Classroom and just look on how the heat flows throughout the um, autoclave. So, ayan nga. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. We have um, different types of autoclave. Uh, we have the pressure cooker type. We have the um, common laboratory autoclave which is parang medyo kala mo maliit lang siya no? pero malaki yan and we have the vertical autoclave so ito yung medyo heavy duty ng kaunti no? malaki siya malalim and we also have the horizontal autoclave which is uh, makikita nyo sa mga food industries yan yung opening niya nandito sa unahan, no? Parang vault, binubuksan. And we also have um, a large automatic hospital autoclave. So, hospital autoclave, gumagamit rin sila ng sterilization uh, process for um, different equipments, no? Like yung mga test tube nila and other equipments that are reusable. Okay, so given that we have, uh, I already gave you the different uh, types of autoclaves. So we have here um, three, no? Na identify natin na uh, types of autoclaves. We have the simple small autoclave, which is uh, the vertical type. We have larger autoclaves, which are horizontal type. And we have the rotary autoclaves. So, unahin natin si simple small autoclaves. So, in vertical uh, autoclaves, the cans are normally placed in the metal basket and it is usually used in smaller operations and it is um, affordable at very affordable siya, no? available at affordable price. And uh, for larger autoclaves, horizontal type, ito yung um, yung lids niya are located in front. So, as you can see here, ito nga yung um, example, no? So, nasa unahan yung lid niya. And, it is a single or double vessel system which means na um, either uh, meron siyang parang akala mo first floor and second floor, no? Na pwedeng paglagyan. So, and it is used for larger operations. So, another type of uh, autoclave is a rotary autoclave. So, yung basket nito containing the cans rotates during sterilization. Kaya nga siya tinawag na rotary. And then, um, it is used for cans with liquid or semi-liquid content. Kasi, um, syempre, habang umiikot, uh, there is a mixing effect. And then, uh, the process can be kept at a short time. Uh, so, since mas mababa yung time, so, 
perhaps mataas yung temperature na ginagamit sa rotary autoclave it's because the component of the food na ginagamit is uh, na pinagagamitan nitong rotary autoclaves is um, semi-liquid no? so if there is a semi-liquid yung kailangan mas mataas yung temp so when there is a higher temperature a uh, shorter time is required so dahil shorter time yung required there's um, better sensory quality Okay, so this is an example of um, laki niya, no? Uh, this is a large uh, capacity of a, a horizontal type of autoclave. So, ito yung door. So, ito yung mga pang ginagamit talaga sa mga food manufacturing units. And we also have this, uh, a smaller one, pero malaki pa din siya. So, itong mga to, no? Pinapasok lang yan dun sa loob ng ating, um, ng door ng ating uh, autoclave. So, ayan, makikita nyo naman. So, there's a video clip from YouTube which um, I already shared through your Google Classroom. So, check nyo lang yun po and it will show you how uh, the steaming, uh, sorry, the sterilization process is done. So, it's just 10 minutes. Pwede nyo if a pabilisin yung speed nya, no? So, just look at it and um, maganda siyang pag-aralan pag kasi nakikita nyo in actual na para kayo nag-fill trip sa food manufacturing units. Okay, so um, we have different containers for uh, thermally treated products. Na-introduce ko na siya actually last um, meeting but I will um, repeat again. No? So, um, in heat preserved food, um, it is required that um, there mu uh, the container must be herme hermetically sealed and of course airtight. So, ang importance nito, kaya ito po yung requirements niya is to basically avoid recontamination from environmental microflora. So, here we have um the containers, we have metal o yung cans natin or tins. We also have uh, glass jars and retortable uh, pouches. Okay, so for um, for metal containers, no, yung cans or tins, which makikita natin usually dyan sa ating pantry, um, we have a steep plate coated with tin and yung interior niya, which is yung loob, no? It is lined with a synthetic compound to prevent chemical reaction with a uh, tin plate of the food. So, hindi man halata, pero meron po yung coating sa loob, no? Para ma-prevent na um, minsan kasi merong chemical reactions with tin itself. So, yan. And, uh, we also have the aluminum versus uh, tin cans, no? So, basically, sa ano lang naman yan, sa type of material used. So, si aluminum, it is um, used for smaller and easy to open cans. So, yung maliliit lang talaga. It is low weight. Mababa ang timbang. And there is a resistance to corrosion. Ibig sabihin, ng corrosion is... Um, Kumbaga, pag uh, pangangalawang, no, it's a chemical reaction. So, aluminum also has a good thermal conductivity. And, um, it is, um, is easily recyclable, no? So, easy recyclability siya. Less rigid and, um, ang ano lang dito downside is it is more expensive. So, another type of container are glass jars. So, you're familiar with this kasi meron din tayo nakikita sa grocery o yung mga, yung iba nagbebenta ng um, fruits or vegetables in glass jars or even tuyo, no? So, it is not common yung use niyan for commercial uh, processes, no? Yung mga na nakikita niyo sa grocery. It's because it is a uh, very fragile, no? Marupok, kumbaga, mabilis siyang uh, mabasag. 
and it is uh, composed of a glass body and a metal lid so kung makikita nyo po dyan, no, may metal lid siya and ang usual products na ginagamitan po natin dyan are uh, like jam we also have this um, Spanish sardines type no, ng fish so yan and we also have retort pouches. So, retort pouches, they are made of uh, laminates of synthetic materials or aluminum foil. So, ito ay usually plastic yan, but uh, with um, much more enhanced na material. So, ang advantages niyan is uh, it has a good thermal conductivity. So, you can preheat it up to 125 degrees Celsius and above. Or, nakaka-withstand sila ng heat sa sterilization process. So, it uh, also, it has a reduced heat treatment time. Kasi nga, mataas yung uh, thermal conductivity. And then, um, yung product quality niya is, of course, not reduced. So, it is... Um, very helpful sa industries, food industries. So, ayan yung mga products na sinasabi ko kaninang pinag, um, pinaggagamitan ng retort pouches, no? such as yung mga ready-to-eat foods, ready meals, even um, yung mga products such as uh, tender juicy, hot dog, um, yung mga spaghetti sauce, uh, pineapple tidbits, and other deli meats. So, ang retort pouches natin, yung seal layer niya, it is um, either made of a PP or PE, which is a short for polypropylene, or uh, PE, which is short for uh, polyethylene. So, maririnig nyo yan pagdating ng, uh, pag kayo ay nag-aral na ng about sa food packaging. And, um, ang outside layer naman niya, no, it is uh, made of PETP or polyester or nylon. So, these are uh, retort pouches. Um, again, it is used uh, for ready-to-eat meals, katulad niyan. For deli meats, ito yung sinasabi kong deli meats, no? yung mga makikita yung um, nakaparang vacuum sealed type ng uh, packaging. Uh, for cured, cured meat products, so pwede yung mga um, maling, yung mga tosino, makikita nyo, di ba? Um, also sauces, sabi ko nga kanina, spaghetti sauce, um, tomato sauce, and so on. For soups, um, and other semi-liquid uh, products, gumagamit ng retort pouches. So, in your exam, um, ganyan ang um, type, no? Yeah, ano kung alin yung much better na packaging um, do we use uh, retort pouches do we use um, metal tin or do we use glass jar so sa glass jar naman um, nakita nyo kanina ang usual na mga products na ginagamit ay um, mga jam and other fruits and vegetables na pickled yung mga pickled products pala and ayan, Spanish sardines. Okay, so, um, cleaning of containers prior to filling. So, isipin nyo, ma'am, paano po ba nililinis yan? So, kasi, there could be a dust, no, na, that can settle inside the cans before filling upon transport and storage. So, um, important na magkaroon ng manual washing of cans with hot water or steam cleaning. So, in larger operations, meron na talaga machine na dinadaanan yung mga cans in order for them to be clean. Pero pag smaller operations, um, manual washing yung ginagawa. Like, um, hot water or steam. So, makikita nyo yan in the process ng sa, um, yung nasa YouTube video. Yan. So, this is the seaming of cans. Again, nasa YouTube video din ito. So, seaming of cans means yung paano sinasara yung can, no? So, after the can is filled with the product mix, after ilagay yung uh, product, uh, the can is sealed with a tight mechanical structure, a structure that is so-called the uh, double seam. 
So, yan po ang double seam na itsura. Kung makikita nyo po, ganyan yung sa mga delata, no? Parang, parang akala mo na they are pressed together. So, yung double seam, um, para siyang yung metal, uh, parang pinaglapat and then enclosed na enclosed siya, no? So, so, as you can see here, ito yung cover, yung color blue. And then, the can body is actually the color yellow. And then, it is pressed together. Nagkakaroon ng double seam. So, yan po yung itsura pag na-enclosed na siya through a machine. So, other information about sterilization. So, reducing the number of microbes. So, the higher the number of microbes, the longer it takes to reduce the number of numbers at uh, acceptable level. Level. So, ayan, uh, syempre, um, if after the um, evaluation, makita na, halimbawa, large volume yung ating um, i-sterilize. So, syempre, mas mataas yung number na... Sorry. Um, mas mataas yung number na kakailanganin, no? Yung the, the time. So, the good quality raw materials and hygienic uh, pre-processing is essential if commercial st sterility is assured. So, um, pagdating sa pre-processing, uh, as, as you have seen sa video nung sa YouTube, uh, important yung mga yon, especially yung sa mga um, washing and toro na cooking process. No? So, yan. Accepted probability. Ang probability uh, in order for um, a food manufacturing to accept the product is, of course, 1 is to 1 million. Kasi, um, impossible. Theoretically, it is impossible to destroy all cells. So, ang kailangan, ang ratio ng um, presence of microorganism is 1 into 1 million or even 1 into 1 billion. Okay, so, um, in, in thermal processing, no, even not just in sterilization, but in thermal processing in general, we have different um, terminologies. So, we have D value, we have uh, Z value, and we also have the F value, meron pang L value, no? So, these are letter representations. So, when we say uh, D value, ito yung time period for each log reduction. Um, it is um, short for decimal reduction time or D value. So, for example, si Bacillus uh, stereo. Uh, thermophilus, uh, ang d-value niya is 4 minutes at 121 degrees Celsius, 1,000 spores. So, uh, log reduction, um, ibig sabihin is um, reduction ng spores over time. So, for example, the higher the, the log reduction, the higher is the reduction of uh, percentage reduction of bacteria. So, kung dati, kung halimbawa, si log reduction, there is 1,000 spores, no? And then, pagdating kay log 2, uh, magiging 500 spores na lang. Tapos, pagdating kay log 3, magiging 250 na lang. Hanggang umabot sa percentage wherein there is a 99.9% na uh, wala na yung microorganism o yung spores natin. So, ito yung example. Um, after 4 minutes, so, ibig sabihin, there is 1 D value. Uh, there would be 100 spores surviving in each can. 1 log reduction yon. And then, after 8 minutes, so, pag na doble mo yung D value, 10 spores na lang yung surviving. So, that's 2 log. So, after 12 minutes, so, 3 times ng d-value natin. So, kasi diba, 4 times 3 is 12. There would be a 1 spore surviving in each lug. So, that's 3 lug reduction. So, yung lahat ng sinabi ko po, it refers to holding product, uh, to holding the product at a constant uh, temperature. So, pag sinabi, basta, just remember, 
pag si devalue yung pinag-uusapan, we talk about the reduction ng spores, no? Log reduction ng spores. So, if you increase the temperature, decimal reduction time or devalue would also uh, decrease. Okay, so now we have another terminology which is a z-value. So, si z-value naman dito, it is the number of degrees the temperature has to be increased in order to reduce the thermal depth tenfold. So, usually, uh, si z-value, it is constant and uh, depends very little upon the environment. So, hindi siya masyadong nagvavary. Um, so, kasi usually, ang z-value ng mga spores ng bacteria is actually 10 degrees Celsius. So, kung ipapakita ko po sa inyo, this is the thermal resistance curve. So, we have the d-value here on our um, y-axis and ang z-value natin ay nasa x-axis. So, si z-value, ibig sabihin yan, every 10 degrees Celsius. No? So, z-value is uh, equivalent to 10 here. Kasi, tingnan nyo, there's a trend na 100, and then 110. And then, pag in-increase nyo ulit siya, another plus 10. Uh, we have 120, and then 130. So, basically, sa karamihan ng bacteria is 10 degrees Celsius ang ating z-value. So, looking again, looking back at our um, d-value, Sa kay Clostridium botulinum, no? So, which is uh, present in, um, makikita siya sa mga canned products pag hindi tama yung process na nagawa or there's an exposure to in uh, uh, bad environment. So, si Clostridium botulinum kasi it is anaerobic. Ibig sabihin, um, it can survive kahit walang oxygen. No? So, kaya nga anaerobic, no? walang oxygen. And uh, it can survive and grow even sa sealed na cans. What else? Um, si Clostridium botulinum, it can also survive in low acid foods. So, kasi, um, albawa, diba sa ating mga can products, usually low acid talaga yung liquid na ginagamit dyan, yung brine. And then, ang minimum requirement niya for uh, destruction is, of course, heat sterilization. And, um, si Clostridium botulinum, in order for it to be killed, bumaba yung spores niya, ang kanyang d-value is 12 times. So, kaya usually, tinatawag siya as 12D. So, pag pinag-uusapan si Clostridium botulinum, 12D, 12 times ang d-value. And, kailangan um, siya ay ma, uh, ma sterilize at 2.5 minutes at 120 degrees Celsius. O yung tinatawag nilang botulinum cook. Automatic yan. Um, so, karamihan ng can products, they are um, um, exposed at 121 degrees Celsius. And at 2.5 minutes, it's because of this Clostridium botulinum, which is, um, yun, yun, yun kasi yung pinakang, kumbaga, uh, fatal, no, na, um, bacteria, na bacterial spores, or that can produce toxins for food poisoning. Okay, so we already talk about D value and Z value. Tignan naman natin ngayon si F value. So, si F-value, this is the amount of heat treatment applied to a food product that can be measured using the F-value concept. So, F-value, ito yung measure of um, the sterilizing value of a process. So, the, uh, the required level of heat treatment for process, it may vary again with factors such as pH, carbohydrate level, and type and expected level of contamination with microorganisms. Although you don't need to memorize this, this part, kasi ang mahalaga is malaman nyo kung ano yung ibig sabihin, yung differences between the three. So, F-value, um, 
So, ito yung concern nito. Um, if F is equal to 1, uh, is equal to 1 minute at 121 degrees Celsius. No? Or, kung titignan natin, or for 10 minutes naman siya, 111.1 degrees Celsius. So, heating uh, such food at 111.1 degrees Celsius for 2 minutes. So, tulad nga kanina, no, sabi, pag 110, oh, sorry, pag 111 degrees Celsius, 10 minutes yung katumbas niya, no? So, kung i-heat natin for 2 minutes, so, ibig sabihin, we divide 2 divided by 10, ang F value natin will be 0.2. So, this means that one can obtain the same killing effect of spores and or vegeta vegetative cells at low and lower temperature provided na yung time of exposure is much longer. So, nagagets nyo po ba na ang si F value siya ang nagsasabi sa atin ng kung ganong katagal yung time no, in order for us to hold that um, certain food item at a given temperature. So, kung makikita nyo po dyan sa trend na yan, um, the higher the temperature, the higher is the F value. No? So, tandaan po natin, again, the 3. So, si D value, yung una po natin pinag-usapan, si D value, it is uh, the number of spores that are killed. No? So, yun yung bumababa. So, that is the log reduction, si D value. And then, we have the Z value. Si Z value is the constant na temperature increase. Kung kailan, nabawa, for every 10 degrees Celsius, tataas si Z value. And then, ano yung nangyayari na trend? No? So, that is uh, Z. And then, we have the F value, which is, um, ito yung temperature holding time. Nakocompute natin siya. So, tulad nga yung sinabi ko kanina, si 10 minutes kasi, 111 degrees Celsius. No? So, pag binabaan natin siya, so, kung halimbawa, ang pagkain natin is 2 minutes lang, um, 2 minutes lang, uh, makocompute agad natin, 2 divided by 10. So, spore killing. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung temperature na required in order for the spores to be killed. Okay, so next is we have the factors that affect the heat resistance of microorganisms. So, ano ba yung mga factors na yan? So, we have the type of microorganism. We have the conditions during cell growth or spore formation. We have the conditions during heat treatment. We have water activity. And we have composition of food. And we also have the D and Z values of enzymes. So, again nga po, pag sinabi nating factors affecting heat resistance, pag sinabi nating heat resistance is parang um, heat proof, no? Kailan, kailan ba tong microorganism na to uh, possible na pwede nating i-kill, no? I or i-destroy. So, ang spores natin, they are much more resistant, no? Dito sa first um, factor, uh, sa type of microorganism, sa spores natin, they are much more resistant than vegetative cells. So, kasi, um, so, ibig sabihin, kailangan pag spores ang ating papatayin or i-destroy, so, kailangan mas mataas yung temperature na ating gamitin, right? So, there's uh, two key differences between a spore and um, a vegetative cell. So, a spore is a small dormant structure produced under unfavorable environmental conditions such as mechanism of survival by certain organisms. So, it is um, inactive, no? And then, si vegetative cell, it is a normal growing cell that is functional. So, kumbaga, si spores, pwede silang ma-produce um, through unfavorable environment. Pero, si vegetative cell, kumbaga, present na siya eh, no? So, active na siya. 
So, kaya, si spores, um, kailangan mamat, hindi, hindi mo pa siya ma-observe, not until um, you test it right after you package it. Okay, so another factor is the conditions during um, cell growth or spore formation. So, si spores natin are produced at higher temperature kasi they are much more heat resistant. And yung stage of growth and type of medium in which they can grow can also affect the heat resistance. So, kung makikita nyo po dyan sa pictures na yan, these are... Um, under the microscope, under the microscope with stain, itong color pink ay si um, Clostridium botulinum. So, kung makikita nyo, mas elongated yung kanyang structure. And then, there's a formation of endospore. So, yung endospore natin, kaya siya endo kasi nakikita nyo yung bilog dyan. The white one. So, nasa loob siya. No, yung formation nasa loob ng mismo um, microorganism and then here on the right side is um, uh, bacillus no? so si bacillus naman mas ano siya shorter hindi siya ganun ka long, long uh, elongated, elongated compared with clostridium and tignan nyo din um, there's an endospore no? sa loob formation of endospore so, ayan, kaya pag uh, spores ang pinag-uusapan, kailangan talaga high temp ang, <laughs> ang kailangan, no? Okay, so, conditions during heat treatment, and this is another factor. So, um, dyan po, pinag-uusapan yung pH level ng pagkain. So, kasi meron tayong mga um, bacteria, such as um, pathogenic and spoilage bacteria, mas um they can easily be destroyed at um low acid no and uh, yung yeast naman natin and fungi acidophiles they are uh, they love the environment of acids and they can be easily destroyed by heat compared with uh, bacterial spores so, kumbaga, si bacterial spores, mas matagal siyang madestruct compared with yeast and fungi. So, low acid food, um, again nga, si Clostridium botulinum, it can still survive at pH um, lower than 4.5, no? So, kaya it is one of the most dangerous kasi even yung pinakang acidic environment and even yung mga um, environment without um, presence of oxygen, they can still survive. So, kaya ang minimum heat treatment applied to high acid foods is um, kailangan minimum 90 degrees Celsius. And you could uh, still go higher than that. No? So, depende nga sa makokompute na F value. So, ayan. So, 90 degrees Celsius. Just remember that um, that minimum heat requirement. So, next is um, water activity or AW. So, sabi, um, moist heat daw, it is more effective um, than dry heat in killing microorganisms. So, ano ba mga example natin ng dry heat? Makikita nyo po dyan sa picture ang example of a moist heat. So, yung boiling natin is a part of a moist heat. Um, another is stewing. So, yung pag mga nagluluto kayo ng mga adobo, kaldereta. So, diba, um, it takes longer to um, cook them. Diba? So, that is an example of moist heat. Compared with dry heat, which is um, grilling, frying, Tama ba? Grilling, um, tingnan na. Ah, oh, here. So, there's a table here. Ito yung mga methods of cooking. So, mga moist heat method natin, we have uh, boiling, we have stewing, steaming, pressure cooking, poaching, blanching. So, mas uh, namamatay yung bacteria um, here. Compared with um, dry heat, um, Roasting, grilling, toasting, baking, sauteing, and even frying. 
So, combination me method nila is braising. So, braising, ginagawa po yan pag nasa oven. Halimbawa, you have a chicken. And then, um, so, syempre sa una, di ba, um, dry heat lang siya. And then, pag medyo malapit na siya maluto, lalagyan nyo siya ng sabaw. So, parang binibrace nyo siya. Okay, so next is uh, composition of food. So, another factor ito kasi um, itong mga proteins, fats, and high concentration of sucrose na foods, they require higher temperature to kill microorganisms that are more heat resistant. No? Um, kasi tumitira sila dyan. No? They, are, they, they have this um, favorable environment to grow in. So, kaya kailangan mas mataas yung temp na um, ating for processing. Okay, so another factor is the D and Z values of food. As you can see here, so this is the D value in minutes and this is the temperature. So, Z value is, um, makikita nyo dito, 10 degrees Celsius. Every increase ng temp, bumababa si D value. So, makita nyo yung trend dyan. And, um, uh, even here, the thermal resistance curve, the higher the temperature, uh, the lower is the D value, or, kumbaga, mas madami ng spores yung, uh, namamatay, no? So, uh, the higher the temperature, uh, the lower is the D value kasi um, nagkaroon na ng lag reduction. Madami ng spores yung uh, namatay. So, again, uh, just a review, yan po yung factors affecting the heat resistance of microorganisms. So, next, um, next naman is, these are the factors affecting the rate at which the product hits inside uh, a container. So, tingnan natin. So, syempre, sa type of container natin, we have the glass versus metal can. So, mas matagal ang um, heat, no? Treatment natin with a uh, glass jars kasi mas, uh, meron silang thermal conductivity. Mataas ang thermal conductivity ni glass jar. Kasi nga, um, makapal siya, di ba? So, mas matagal yung heating time natin compared with metal can. So, another is the size of container. Sa large versus small, of course, the larger the container, the longer it will take to, to heat than a smaller container. So, mapapansin nyo naman dito, no, may iba't iba tayong size ng container. Ibig sabihin, um, parang ano na, automatic ob na obvious na yung, um, yung definition nito, no, na the larger, the longer it takes to heat. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina about agitation, no, so pag semi-liquid or um, semi-liquid, liquid na products, uh, mas viscous yung product the higher the heating rate so it is um, agitation of container it is based dun sa content ng container and increased yung heating rate natin if food is viscous or semi-solid so kung i-compare po natin dito sa dalawa no, we have pineapple juice and tomato sauce um, kung tatanungin ko kayo alin ang mas viscous alin ang mas semi-liquid of course, si tomato sauce. So, ibig sabihin, mas matagal dapat yung heating time natin here. No? So, uh, maybe sa exam, ganyan din po yung mga types of questions more on practical uses. No? So, uh, may mga choices dyan. Uh, which takes longer to heat? Uh, we have um, tomato sauce, we have pineapple juice, water, and uh, so on. So, syempre, uh, mas viscous, mas matagal yung heating. Okay, another is a diff type of the product. So, different products conduct heat more or less easily. 
So, ibig sabihin, uh, there's a different heating capacity, capacity depende sa product natin or food item. So, nagvavary, dyan, nagvavary po dyan yung viscosity, yung structure, and other factors. So, for example, um, which takes longer to heat. So, we have here a fish, no? a fish fillet, and a steak. So, based sa structure niya, mas, um, mas uh, madaling i-heat, di ba, si fish compared with um, uh, beef or steak kasi mas complex ang structure ng protein ng mga meats natin such as pork and beef. So, another here, based on the composition, alin kaya ang mas matagal i-heat? So, of course, um, makikita natin mas matagal i-heat po itong si mixed vegetables compared with a, a pumpkin soup kasi ito is just very homogeneous lang naman siya is a homogeneous mixture compared with this one that is heterogeneous so mas um, ang structure ng vegetable is uh, much complex dito no so ayan so ayan no so kasama rin yan sa exam so another is uh, the factor another factor is the headspace so si headspace naman if there is insufficient uh, headspace it can also affect the rate of heating especially pag mga retort yung ating uh, retort pouches yung ginagamit natin sa food products so this these are the headspace requirements no um, we have sa jam and jellies, 1 fourth inch lang above the lid. And then, si, um, pagdating naman sa fruits and tomatoes, no? Na, if they are processed in boiling water. So, 1 half inch yung kailangan niya. And then, for low acid foods, no? It, if they are processed in pressure cooker, ang kanyang kailangan na, um, uh, headspace is 1 to 1 and 1 fourth um, inch. So, kung mapapansin nyo po, um, si jam and jellies, they are very much um, high, uh, kumbaga mas mataas yung feeling niya, no? Yung headspace niya is maliit. So, it's because sobrang viscous na niya. And yung agitating niya, hindi naman siya masyadong nag agitate even if um, rotating yung ating gamitin na um, autoclave. So, dito naman, um, mas liquid. So, in boiling water yung gagamitin na sterilization process natin. So, one half inch. Si low acid food, eto naman, pag prinasa siya sa pressure um, canner, no? so, kung mapapansin nyo, one and one fourth inch, para magbigay ng room for the heat, no? Kasi baka and also the um, liquid itself. No, kasi, uh, delikado din pag masyadong mataas yan. Baka mag-spill. Okay? So, I use this um, reference, no? Safe Food 360. It is also uploaded on your Google Classroom. So, pwede nyo basahin, basahin yan. So, reading is good. So, just enjoy learning and um, I hope uh, you were able to learn something new today under uh, thermal processing of food, no? S specifically sa sterilization process. So, thank you guys!